Good afternoon, lovely people. Good afternoon. How are you all feeling? Excellent. Thumbs up, excellent. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, very good. Thumbs up over there. Only Agent Ricard has no thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs are otherwise engaged. Oh, now thumbs up, very good. So it is 3.45 and I do like to start on time. Uh, but there's not a lot of people in the room, so shall we see if any other people want to get on the boat before we take off, or shall we set sail? One person just made it. Just a coffee break, so. Yeah, that's what I'm sort of wondering. Hello. Hola. Hola. We could, and we're going to chat a bit. <laughs> nice and easy. So what's consensus? We wait a little bit or go? Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay. That's two minutes. No minutes. All right. Well... Just in case you were wondering what session you've come to, you have come to the Tools for Talking session. And this is a core conversation. Is every one of you in the right place right now? So far, so good. Remind me to slow down, by the way. I listened to my presentation of last time and it was like... <laughs> So I'm going to try to talk more slowly. Okay. <clears throat> so tools for talking. This is very meta. It's the core conversation track. The title is Tools for Talking, and it's a talk. This, uh, this is amusing to me, or was amusing to me at the time I submitted the session. I have a hashtag. So, you know, feel free to extend the, the meta-ness of the conversation about communication to social media channels. Hash tools for talking. This is not meant to be read. This is for the fact that this session is being recorded. I like to put the session abstract on a slide so it's easy and referenceable and pausable and you can see what this was meant to be about. There's also a bit of an outline there of how I hope the session will go. I'm just going to refresh my memory. Yeah, that's what I had in mind. So just by way of a little bit of an introduction, um, probably about half of you I don't need, I actually know you. For those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Donna Benjamin. I'm also known as Cutter Club, so you can find me on the Twitters and on Drupal.org and on Skype and various places. Also at Gmail if you want to get in touch with me. Cutter Club is my handle from last century. Um, I also chair the community working group and it's that work which really led me to uh, want to give this kind of presentation or more correctly host this kind of conversation. Um, communication is something that comes up a lot in our work in the community working group in terms of conflict resolution, in terms of resolving the kinds of issues that get raised the way we talk to each other, the tools that we use, all play a part and that was very instrumental in why I wanted to do this. I've also, I also sit on the board of the Drupal Association, I run my own business, I have a few other roles. I'd like to say I have five jobs, one for each day of the week. It gets a little intense sometimes. So why do I care about communication? And why do you all care about communication? You've come to this talk. And if you read it carefully, if you read the abstract and not just the title in the program, it said at the bottom that there will be some participation. Yeah? So you're up for that. So why do we care about communication? Why would we spend precious time at DrupalCon talking about talking?
in terms of actual tooling. So just to repeat for the recording, Joao says that, you know, we have two main methods of communication in our community. We have IRC and we have the issue queues. The issue queues aren't really, weren't really designed for communicating. They were designed for issue tracking more. IRC is a communication channel and we wonder what other kind of tools there might be. So what sorts of other... Why else? Why, are we, why do you care about communication to come to a session like this? Megan? Vicky? Vicky? <laughs> Yep. As a designer, uh, Vicky's worried, and, and I, I share your concerns, that the Drupal world doesn't talk enough to other kinds of communicators such as designers. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Talk to Morton about design and the issue queue. Um, Megan, you had a... Um, st struggling with communication itself and the challenges, the, the balance between what's intended and what's received, and these things aren't often can can sometimes be different. And how? What are some of the ways we might look at look at that? Yeah. Other other contributions. Why do you care about communication? Why have you come to DrupalCon to sit in a session called Tools for Talking? some issues previously uh, where we had the people who told us what to do but uh, instead forgot to sell what we are supposed to do so it uh, caused counter reaction and uh, when we communicated the things correct way and uh, sold uh, these things uh, to people who are working with us and uh, they started to believe uh, what we are doing uh, that's when things changed dramatically so I think that uh, this is one of the reasons that you should care about communication. Okay, so I'm going to try to summarise that, <coughs> is that as a, as a team leader, yes. you were working in... Uh, thank you, Ali. You were working in a, um, uh, in a situation where communication was really important and you, the communication worked in one way but then wasn't really filtered through the team in another and that then at a later point in time... Um, a better communication process was brought in into, into practice and you were able to see the results were dramatically different from actually having a better process for communicating. Yeah, basically. Thank you. So I'm going to use a mic because I like people using mics. <clears throat> I'm here because I have my own stack and tools for communicating, but I'm interested in what everybody else, everybody else's stack is like. Thank you. And that's good practice. This is going to be um, a challenging session to run in this way with a single mic. And, and apologies now for anyone listening to this after the fact. Um, there are going to be some dead spots as we actually have some group discussions, but we're going to then have feedback. And I'm going to work with the um, archiving team later to see if we can just cut out those dead spots from the recording for the future archive. So we don't need to worry about it in the room, okay? So, um, when we do report back, though, we will be using the mic, but the group discussion pieces will obviously just be nice moments of reflection for those watching the video. Okay, so moving on. Communication is a fundamental kind of human thing. It's a bit of a truism, you know, and why would I say it? But we have, you know, we've all been given ears to hear and eyes to see and read. So we have oral cues, we have visual cues, we read, we we watch, we see body language and facial expressions. 
we have mouths to speak and actually use our voices. And, you know, and it was actually Theo who reminded me, it's also about the feelings that we have about communicating and when we're communicated with. And I think that comes a bit to what Megan was saying, is sometimes the feelings that we... Um, our, our responses to what we're hearing may not necessarily match with the intent of the communicator. And all of this, um, all of this mixes together. So... What I really wanted to do was break this into two sections. I want us to think about the tech tools that we use, and so Joao's point to using issue cues, using IRC, and there are a whole bunch of others. Some of them are synchronous, some of them are asynchronous, real time. Some of them let us hear tone of voice, let us see facial expressions. Um, you know, the last one, meetups and camps, where we get to be face to face and read each other, and we you know, the role that that part plays. So the actual methods, I guess, that we use, um, technolo technological methods. But then the other part um, that I want to also get into and explore are the human tools for talking. There have been um, communication skills and strategies and approaches and ways of responding to human behaviour. Um, there's a whole range of these tools, and this is by no means <laughs> comprehensive. This is just some that I'm aware of. Um, there are a few more that I'm aware of that I haven't put on the list, this list. So um, I'm not going to come to you and say that one is the one that you should use. What I've been, um, what I've taken from a bunch of these is there's some really common elements in, in all of them. Some of them have actually the same message, but also they all have different elements. And I'm kind of, um, it's messy in my head, but I feel like I pull on different tools at different times. And just like the tech tools, like sometimes IRC is right and sometimes the issue queue will do, but sometimes we need to go to a hangout, the kinds of um, communication skills and strategies and approaches also, you might need a different tool set for different scenarios. So far, so good? Okay. Now, what I really want to do, so I kind of go into the human tools a bit more. I, I don't think with this audience that I really need to go deep into explaining what IRC is to any... Does anyone actually not know what IRC is? Very good, thank you. The Internet Relay Chat, it's a real-time chat forum. It's been around a long time. Um, it's being replaced by things like Slack and HipChat and whatever, but yeah, okay. So um, what I want to do now, and um, for the recording, we're going to have a group discussion now, so you're probably want to, going to pause shortly after this. Um, what I want us to do is kind of to huddle into groups and talk about the, the tech tools that we use. And what I, what I would really like is if could someone could take some notes in that, in, during that discussion so that we can have a bit of a report back. So we're going to have two separate discussions, one quickly on tools, one quickly, well, the tech tools, and one then quickly on the human tools, and then a slightly longer discussion on bringing those together and whether or not some, uh, some of the uh, human tools um, content fits better with the tech tool kind of content. And yes, please, use your feet. If this isn't for you, please feel free to go somewhere else. That's fine by me. It's not going to be for everybody. I, I, I appreciate that. So... Um, Probably, I don't know, probably about three groups, I think. This sort of cluster here, cluster here, and may, oh, see if it's, it's like a two or three over here, I'm not sure. So I want you to, the thing about the tech tools in specifically is to actually tease out why we use one over another. What are the kinds of, um, the kinds of discussions we have in IRC? What's the nature of the discussions that we have in issue queues, right? So that sort of, you know, really kind of tease it out to see what those kind of key criteria are. So we'll do that one first and then we'll come back to the human tools. So gather up. Okay. Um, I'm going... It's, this is always harder to interrupt the conversations because I think they're really good ones. Um, but I do want us to move on to more of the, um, the human tools for talking. Now, I've got a quick list here, um, and I, I just want to give a quick summary of each of them. I can't possibly cover the breadth of these, but I also want to get, as we go through each one, a bit of a show of hands of if you're familiar with any of these um, approaches as we go through, okay? And I know my, my guru on one of them is in the room, so 
Um, I'm hoping that some of the others are familiar to you as well. So um, powerful non-defensive communication, and I have a huge amount of gratitude to Melissa for introducing me to this because it is a really useful set of um, tools for thinking about communication and more about how we respond and how we choose to respond, I think, is the real depth of this, is um, responding in a non-defensive way is really key to um, not escalating into conflict a lot of the time. So this one's really powerful. So anyone who's familiar with this one before today? Two of you? Okay, great. The next one is a little bit more commonly... Um, uh, more commonly known is non-violent communication. Anyone familiar with this one? A few more, yep. So one of the things I think is interesting is there's, there's definitely parallels between these two. So you see observations. Um, making observations is really important in PNDC as well as in um, uh, NVC. Um, and then the, the way you kind of respond to having made those observations is a bit different. Uh, Active listening. This one's even more widely known. Yep, much more familiar. Um, and, and this is one of the ones where our online communication tools really don't let us do that physical part and how we have to compensate for that is sort of one of those crossover areas that I want to explore. Now, I've put too many... Don't it, There's way too many words here, but who's familiar with appreciative inquiry... Okay, only a couple of you on that one. It's less about um, pure communication skills and more about, I guess, a holistic approach to taking a positive... Um, uh, looking at things in a positive way and focusing on the positive to kind of move things forward in a more positive way to ban rather than trying to figure out exactly what went wrong. Let's abandon that and focus on what went right. It's a very crude summary, but... Forgive me. Transactional analysis. Anyone familiar with this one? Melissa knows all the things. Yeah. This was this one is actually the first that I was ever um, familiar with because I was given a book called TA for Tots when I was actually very small, um, and the the parent adult child is a way of summarising the nature of our interactions or our trans our communication transactions and whether or not they're at an adult-to-adult -adult level or a parent-to-child or a child-to-parent and the, the kind of different interactions there. Who's familiar with TA? A couple of you. Not... Um, the drama triangle and its flip side. Um, this, one, this one, when I was first, um, uh, first exposed, is that the right word, to, to this one, it really it was a real aha moment for me is to just kind of get drawn into this and you don't really understand what's going on and you've been pulled into a what is actually a triangular kind of transactional relationship with, with someone or a group. And the flip side is to take a more positive angle of it is to call the empowerment dynamic. Instead of having victim, persecutor and rescuer, you have a creator, a challenger and a coach um, to take a more... Um, more uh, functional way of exploring that dynamic. Who's familiar with either of those? Both? Yep. Just the previous one? Yep. And, um, and this one, actually, I've only just sort of come across, even though it's just really a, a nice, really obvious one, the seven seeds of effective communication. And actually, I did see a nice little graphic which had a boat and... Anyway, uh, carrying on. Clear, concise, concrete, correct, coherent, complete and courteous, which is kind of nice compared with the others there. It's, it's a really nice collection of things. So um, that's really, uh, I think that was, yeah. Um, those, that one. Um, just as, you know, a collection, and there are probably others. And so, you know, many of you were familiar with one or more of these. 
So, you know, in the notes and perhaps in the feedback, if there are others that I would, I would really love to hear about them and share. So what I want you to do now is just like we kind of explored the nature of those tech tools that we use, how might some of these sorts of tools be used more effectively in our community to improve the nature of our communications? Like this is a core conversation and came out of my work in the community working group that we were seeing... Um, coming out of frustration of where we were in the cycle, to be honest, but the communication was key to either solving those or understanding those issues. Um, sometimes poor communication was the cause of, a, of an issue. Sometimes great communication resolved something that had been intractable, you know, looking at something from a different perspective. So, again, let's huddle up into our groups, um, share what you know about these kinds of tools and, if you know of others, talk about perhaps the, um, the commonalities between them and perhaps some of the outlying ideas. Over to you. Pause the recording. Okay. <clears throat> what I want you to, to do now is to... And you may have already been doing this, but to start to bring together those threads of the actual technology tools that we rely on and the nature of these kinds of approaches, like not necessarily any given one of them, but how would we, how might we start to take some of the knowledge of this kind of stuff and apply it to the real challenge that most of us, you know, we most of us have to communicate day to day using tools of one kind or another. Our opportunity to get together and actually talk to each other and eyeball each other like we're doing now is so slim in our community that we have to rely on these technologies. But can we bring some of the knowledge from those other strategies and approaches into when we have to communicate with these tools. That's where I want you to bring those two threads together now for the next probably 10 to 15 minutes. What I also want you to do, though, is to um, come, as you come to the end of that conversation, is to bring it together because what I'd really like us to do is to report back via the microphone from each group to just have a, a bit of a quick summary of the kinds of insights that you've come to after this conversation. Make sense? Clear? Go. Okay, we ready to uh, do a bit of report back for the for the broader group and for our friends listening at home. Um, anyone want to volunteer to go first? We've only got three groups. Yeah, thanks, Megan. Hello, um, from our group. Well, do you want to hear from all of the brainstorming or just this most recent? Well, I was kind of hoping that the final one would bring bring together thoughts from the first. So, okay. yeah. Um, we kind of came up with the idea that communication really goes through the interaction type you need. So email is asynchronous, whereas a phone call could be immediate or intrusive also at the same time. And it... Uh, timeliness, immediacy, and the type of response desired kind of dictate what we use when. Um, we also talked about one-to-one -one communication versus one-to-a-group or many-to-many -many and what type of tools are useful. Uh, and also public versus private communication. Um, like Twitter and IRC are very public, whereas an email it would be assumed that it was private. Um, for active listening online, when someone's typing, you can say yes or okay, kind of like you would in a conversation where you acknowledge that you're listening, use emoticons, ask questions and follow-ups. Uh, with newer communication tools, they're more sophisticated with, for example, read receipts and um, not an answer means something now because delivered and not read is different from delivered, read, and no response. Um, we can humanize online reactions, i.e. adding a person's picture next to comments in the issue queue so you know that you're talking to a person and not just an anonymous troll. Um, and then um, kind of trying to stay grounded when you're interacting with people online. <laughs> nice. Any other, from the rest of the group, want to shout out any other key bits that wanted to reinforce or no? Nodding's all good? 
Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Okay, and, uh, and either of the other groups want to do the middle spot? Thanks, Vicky. So we had far fewer people, so we sort of were a bit more fo focused on uh, one or two particular areas. Um, what we were sort of the discussions came about with the first part were um, our problems with sort of the issue queue and IRC um, with the former that um, you know things get buried and that you sometimes don't want sometimes it encourages sort of negative comments there's you don't have things such as you know plus one or you know I like that it's easier to sort of be negative or giving comments um, with IRC um, even though our team you know are mostly developers are saying it's the issue of it being just overload you go in and there's just too much you have to turn it off um, and it's also um, in ephemeral that you know if you suddenly drop off you've lost everything there's no sense of history so it can potentially be quite a sort of disjointed experience um, so sort of thinking about ways to um, you know to improve that sort of some of the things which I think the other team discussed came in having things such as being able to just have you know plus ones or um, acknowledge things I think yeah, as we're saying with um, the more sophisticated tools and um, I think that was sort of I'm trying to think if there are any other things that we discussed in terms of solutions. <laughs> Short and sweet. <laughs> Thanks, Vicky. And our and our final group have a volunteer share back your thoughts. Everyone's looking down somewhere else. Anyone? No one? Please Pretty please. <laughs> You're being volunteered, Ali. All right, Melissa, thank you. I'd say for the first part, when we were talking about tools, we started with just um, the tools that were being used either in the business or just how many there are, mm -hmm. and then spoke a little bit, I'm not even sure we put it in these terms, but now that I think about it, about how much disclosure is required in advance. So when you're in the issue queue, you kind of have to put your whole message together and to put yourself out there and then you wait and there's latency. When you get into IRC, you don't have all the nonverbals, but you can still correct a misunderstanding quite quickly. So it doesn't sit out there misunderstood for a really long time potentially. So there's the opportunity to go back and correct. And then when you're talking on a hangout or face to face, you can not even have to disclose before you see they're not getting what you meant at all. And maybe you want to back up and try again. So we talked a little bit about that. And then as we talked about the pe which is kind of people process, not tool exactly, but um, then when we were talking about the people processes, we went pretty quickly from these are all about our personal style of communication, but they sit alongside decision making structures. Mm -hmm. And so we spent some, a, a little time talking about, actually most of the time talking about the decision making structure, um, more than we did about the human tools for talking because they're related in, in how they work. So. Very nice, thank you. Any other bits? That, th thank you all so much for that. I mean, even in those summaries, and I managed to pop into, and he, you know, eavesdrop a little bit on some of the conversations. But even in those summaries, there were definitely elements that I hadn't really gone into deeply in my thinking um, before this. So, um, some of the key ones that, I, that that kind of really resonated for me as you spoke. I mean, Megan was speaking about um, the using um, using acknowledgements in IRC, like just to acknowledge that you're still there and you're listening, you may not have something necessarily to respond, but an okay, a yes, an, an ack, effectively. You know, just those sorts of little kind of things. And, um, you know, Vicky's note about, you know, how the tendency with IRC is an example where you can just lose the conversation because of the nature of the technology. Now, some people might use tools to stay online all the time, but, you know, there is this kind of disjointedness about it. And, and earlier... Um, Sorry, what was your name? Christian was sort of saying that, um, you know, there's there's a sort of um, intimidating nature to IRC, that there's this huge long list of names there and it can sometimes really feel um, like you go in, you say something and then there's kind of crickets. You know, was that was it something I said or is no one awake? You know, there's this sort of element of unknown. You know, and I, and I really like that bringing in that sense of the decision-making structures alongside these kind of 
processes and, and methodologies is yes, they are. They do either support or distract from you know what the the work that might need to be done, the decisions that that might need to be made. So thank you all really um, very much for you know humouring me, I guess, and you know having these conversations and taking these insights further. I guess now I, I kind of want to give you all a job to do um, and that is taking, you know, the big, this is basically the beginning of a conversation and a way of thinking about the way we communicate. Now, there are some heavy hitters in the room here today. Um, I really want to um, recruit you, I guess, to have a more intentional and meaningful um, way forward in the way that we communicate, how we might carry this conversation through our community to improve it generally. I think a lot of the kinds of issues and conflicts that I'm seeing in the community working group really could be uh, easier if we were more intentional about the, about the way we actually communicate. But it's not an easy meme to spread, right? Which is why I need help and why if you have bothered to come to a session like this um, at DrupalCon, I'm waving at you, <laughs> um, and thank you for, you know, putting this on. Um, you know, if you've, if you've come and sat here through this session that, you know, how might we, you know, and this is, I think, another opportunity just to hear some last thoughts, how might we take this forward into our community? How might we be more intentional about the way we communicate? Thanks, Ken. So I'm going to use the actual microphone. Uh, I don't know, the rest of the group might um, disagree with me, but, but really the way I'd like to take that out is to have some kind of standard, right? One of the things that we've seen recently that I thought was pretty useful, if not perfect, is we have issue queue summaries now, right, which say, hey, this is why this is important, this is what remains, this is what it breaks, this is what it changes. Can we have something like that for responding to issues, for asking for decisions to be made? Right, some kind of standard that we all just agree to that says, okay, when we interact in this type of situation, this is the model we're going to follow. And the, the example that I had is if you're submitting a medical paper to a journal, right, you have to start with research. You have to start with here's the prior art, <laughs> here's the status of things when we're talking about leukemia treatments, right, here are the knowns, here are the successes, here are the unknowns, and here's what we're going to talk about. And, and we don't do that consistently, I don't think. So if, if we had a, if you said, hey, let's try this model, um, I'd, I'd be excited. I like that idea. Or if we can come up with a model, right? But can I subscribe to your newsletter? No, <laughs> uh, I, no I really do. And I, and I wonder how we might take that forward. I mean, if we, we, do have, we do have coding standards. Can we have right. communicating standards? And like the, the, issue, the issue summary as a template when you go in as a tool to support that process. So, yeah, um, maybe we should uh, file something in the community working group issue queue to say, you know, this, this, this is some work we could do to support, um, to support that kind of work. Thanks, Ken. Awesome. Melissa. I like that idea and I'm very supportive of it. I just want to acknowledge that I think that it's at, at deep odds with the narrative of the duocracy. And we talked about that a little in the group. The idea that you just get in there and do the work and everybody is able to contribute. And I think that there's a tension that we ha would have to pay as a community to reconciling a research-based experienced expert approach, which again, I am not arguing against this, all right, with the, hey, you can, this is approachable, this is easy. Mm. Because clearly with the example from the medical community, we're talking about specialists. And we have become a community of specialists and I don't believe that our identity as a community has caught up with that. Mm, interesting. <laughs> reply, right of reply. But, but I think I think we do have, and we talked about this too. I think we have positive models for this already in the community. And if uh, how many of you have committed, uh, participated in a security issue? 
So what happens in a security issue, of course, is someone files it, it gets reported, and then the experts on the security team then reach out to subject matter experts, generally either the maintainer of the subsystem and or the module maintainer. I still get pinged. I'm in maintainer.txt for node access. So if there's a node security issue, I get pinged to review it, right? And then the process, of course, is, you know, the person who owns the responsibility is takes on the, the task of trying to fix it. But that's then reviewed by another subject matter expert and then reviewed by the security team and then coordinated for release. So, I mean, I think we do have some structures for these sorts of things. They're just not standardly applied. Right. Um, I, I guess I should also say that I actually hate the issue queue summary and I never fill them out because I don't have, I don't feel like I have enough time. Um, and I, so, yeah. I'm contradicting myself is what I'm saying. That's a very human part of communication. So I think we've got time to hear Tim and then we are out of time. Um, so, yeah, thank you all. But, yeah, Tim. Yeah, um, I just, like, I really like your idea, Melissa, and, um, well, you know, the whole, everything about it. Um, I just, it, there was interesting, uh, I was talking to Kathy Thays in the previous session about, um, trying to, you know, add something to the issue queue to convey to people like what, basically not, whether or not they should bother working on something. So like if this is, it's a, you know, a major task for 8.0, of, of course you should spend the time on it. But if it's some like minor feature request for 8.1, not everyone seeing that page knows that they probably shouldn't spend the time on it today because it's not going to happen for, for years. Um, but the, the problem with that and the same thing with like the issues submission guidelines and the thing that says don't put public security issues in the queue is no one reads that. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll need to find some way, I don't have the answer, but we need to find some way to convey it that isn't a block of text. Um, and I think that's going to be a huge challenge, even if we come up with great guidelines and, you know, and they're easy and, and not stressful and not biased against non-English speak, native English speakers and, and all that. Well, if we take advice from Natalie's keynote this morning, we should put pictures of food next to the guidelines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. No, it's really, really useful. Okay, we, we are right on time. Um, I can have feedback, please. Um, it, I know it's a really different kind of session to what we usually have at DrupalCon, so I would very much appreciate you taking the time to actually... Um, I've just done a, a, you know, a short URL. That's just my session node. Um, please share your thoughts and it doesn't necessarily have to be pure session feedback. If you've got some further thoughts to share um, and, you, and you want to share them with me um, privately then, then put it in the evaluation notes. If you want to share more publicly then perhaps leave some comments um, on the note and you know we can, we can pick up some of these threads. Um, I think I will follow up with um, an issue in the community working groups um, just to you know, explore that idea and some of the pros and cons that we might, we might hit there. But um, really can't express my gratitude enough that, you know, there were actually people in the room for this topic and that you were all so willing to engage in and participate in, in discussion because, you know, I'm this, I have this discussion in my head. So it's really nice to hear um, the kinds of thoughts of other people, some that resonate and match and some new and some challenging ideas too. So thank you very much. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs>